Gingrich's immediate uh, political future may hinge on the outcome of primaries in Alabama and Mississippi next week. Rick Santorum is out to make it a two-man race, of course. Could Gingrich be a kingmaker? Our political panel here to weigh in on that and all the other political topics this morning. In Washington, Marjorie Clifton, Democratic strategist and national editor of GoVote.com. In West Palm Beach, Florida, Eric Erickson, editor-in-chief of RedState.com. And also in Miami, <laughs> Goldie Taylor, independent political analyst, managing editor of the Goldie Taylor Project. Welcome, everyone. Eric, I want to start with you. Um, yesterday, Tony Perkins sent an email to his, you know, to his followers saying Gingrich, it's time for Gingrich to, to move on, to get out of the race and take the position of a kingmaker. Um, you said the very same thing about Rick Perry, and then, of course, Rick Perry dropped out. Is it time for this to be a two-man race? I think a lot of conservatives are starting to see that. When you drill down into the exit polling from Ohio, it looks very much like if Newt Gingrich had gotten out before Ohio, most of his voters would have gone to Rick Santorum. It would have been an easy night for Santorum had Gingrich not been there. Likewise, you look at Oklahoma and Tennessee, both states that Gingrich was expected to do very well in, he wound up not doing well in those. He didn't get the 50 percent in his skin. You look at Alabama and Mississippi, it's pretty clear that Gingrich voters are dragging down Santorum. Santorum voters are dragging down Gingrich. But united, they would be able to stop Mitt Romney in those states. You know, Goldie, I want to bring you in and talk a little bit about the jobs report because this is something that, you know, you're likely to get 200,000 plus jobs today, according to economists, right? Uh, which it, on its surface is good news. But the president has the challenge of trumpeting these numbers while, while walking a very fine line and acknowledging that a lot of people are still underemployed, uh, that Republicans do have a, a point that the unemployment rate still is too high. Uh, and, and Mitt Romney has recently even said something to, the, to that effect, you know, kind of taking some of the oomph out of the president's victory on the jobs front. Listen. These days, the, you're the president and his team. They keep telling us that things are getting better. But 24 million Americans are still struggling for work. They're high-fiving each other in the West Wing. But my friends, the truth is, 8% unemployment is not the best America can do. It's just the best that this administration can do. So I think all of the press releases have already been written for everyone who wants to spin these numbers the way they want them on the trail today. So how does the White House play it, Goldie? I think you're right. I think the White House has a very fine line to walk on this. Sure, we're in one of the worst economic downturns that we've seen in modern times, and it's going to take a lot, you know, really to get us out of this. This is a this is good news. You know, 200,000 additional jobs is always good news. It clearly is not enough. There are too many Americans still hurting out there. And so, sure, there's a fine line for this president to walk. But there's also a fine line for these GOP candidates to walk. On the one hand, they say that government, you know, can't create jobs. And on the other hand, they're going to blame the White House for not creating jobs. And so I'm not really sure which one they want. The fact is we've all got to work together. And betting against Americans is ne never, ever going to work. And you're likely to see more government jobs lost in, in this report. I mean, we have seen that again and again and again. And more job cut or more uh, cuts from, it, from the budget will mean more government jobs lost. And that has been, of course, something that's been key in the Republican platform. Marjorie, um, the House, though, and the Senate is going to take on, um, you know, this Jobs Act. The House passed this Jobs Act yesterday. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you what people in, in the business world were saying. They were kind of yawning about this yesterday because four of these proposals have already been passed by the House, and it doesn't really move the needle on the economy, yet they're trumpeting it as this great show of bipartisanship. Um, you know, is it, is, it, is it an important victory, this bipartisanship we're seeing, or is it just one small little move in a sea of partisanship? Well, I think anything is a move right now. I mean, as we've seen, the, the approval rating for Congress has been between 4 and 7 and maybe 9 percent. And so they need any victories they can get at this point. Um, again, what's enough right now? That's the question. And I, as you've just been talking about, it's all about positioning. And as many of us exper experience in our own relationship, it's about setting expectations. So what's a reasonable bump in the economy given where we've been historically? You know, will this, will this bill actually move the, the, the needle forward a little bit? Yes. But is it enough? Probably not. Um, and, you know, a third, a third month now of improved numbers is absolutely a win for everyone. Yeah. Do you guys agree with me? I mean, we don't really have much time left, so maybe a show of hands or a nod or whatever. But do you guys agree with me that the jobs report and what we do on jobs here in the near term is probably the most important poll indicator in this, in this election season? I mean, this is the number that everybody's following. Yes? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, that, that, that and yeah. the gas price. All right. That and <laughs> yes. gas prices, you're right, absolutely. And, and basically, I mean, I don't know how much control anybody has over any of those things right, right. now in the very near term, so they're all adjusting That's their right. strategies accordingly. All right, thank you so much, Eric, Goldie, Marjorie. Nice to see all of you this morning, bright and early for us on a Friday. Happy Friday.
bright and early for them. I know. Not bright and early for us. It's late.